just started recording the meeting, so let's call this meeting to order. Um, I'm going to start with an addition or a change to the agenda. I just want to note that I mistakenly said no action expected for the executive committee charter revision. I believe there may well be an action, so I just want to let folks know that. Are there any other additions or changes? Okay. Did you change the sequence, Jerry? Jerry? Did I change the the sequence, the presentation? Yeah. Of anything? Yes, I did. Yes, this the I I've sent I put read ahead material up in the uh, on the one drive for today's meeting, and I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to go see any of that, but I I I put it up there in in the hope that maybe if anybody wanted to. Um, so I'm, I did make those changes there, Ray. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment? <clears throat> okay. So let me, let me move, let me move into the rest of our agenda here. Um, I'm going to introduce who has been introduced by fire the past few days, <laughs> Janelle Smith, who is our employee number one, new executive director. And I'm, I'm going to try really hard to stay tight to the timing on the agenda, but Janelle, I would love you just to say a little bit something about yourself and maybe about your experience for the past 48 hours. Oh, wow. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, Janelle Smith. I'm excited to be the executive director of CD Fiber and to be working with everyone. Um, the last 48 hours have been, we, we are excitedly expecting our first fiber delivery and uh, getting all of the pieces in line so that we can accept that delivery um, and checking all the boxes, dotting, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Although I love to say crossing your I's, <laughs> dotting the T's, right? So all of the above, um, very busy. Um, my background is building rural infrastructure, um, mostly in telecom, cell towers. This is uh, an exciting experience. Um, and I, I welcome everybody to reach out to me as, as you wish, um, keep an open correspondence communication. Um, so thank you, and I'll stick to that, but thank you. <laughs> well, th thanks, Janiel. I think I can, I can speak for the rest of us that have been working with you over the past week, even though, let me say that uh, yesterday was Janiel's first day. We've been working with her over a week, including Saturday meetings, or was it Sunday? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's been a pleasure. We're really happy to have you here, and we're we're looking forward uh, to continue working with you. And I see I have a hand. It looks like it's from uh, John. Yep. Uh, just a note. Uh, David Healy and I have, have had a little email uh, back and forth about uh, <laughs> taking advantage of the fiber delivery for a picture and a press release. Uh, so if there's any way to know, and and David thinks he can get Jeff Wallace Brodeur from the Times Argus to show up, which seems like a good opportunity for them. Uh, we would need to have some advance warning of when the fiber is going to get there, or we'd have to set up some sort of thing after it gets there. I, I think so, we right. may have to stage Keep this. <laughs> yeah. So you, we, I, I, might I, have to stage it. we might have to do it next week um, it, after the delivery, um, but we are still awaiting the details of the delivery. We were advised that we would get 24 to 48 hours notice for tomorrow. That probably won't happen at this point. <laughs> it's a physical impossibility. Uh, but uh, but as soon as I have information, John, yes, um, we are. And we've spoken with Christine Hallquist as well. And she's on board with having this as a press uh, event. So uh, agreed. And you will be in the loop, John. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, Matt, can you take us through the meeting minutes approval, please? Uh, yeah, so motion to approve the, uh, that's going to be the March 8th, 2020, uh, 2022 meeting minutes. The mm -hmm. March 16th, 2022 meeting minutes. And the placeholder for the March 14th, 2022 meeting that did not happen due to lack of quorum. Um, so, motion to approve those documents as drafted and sent to the governing board. 
I, I, I heard a second. Um, all in approval. Let's have an aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed to nay? Mm -hmm. Sounds like all, all, all are approved here. Thank you very much. So motions move to accept those minutes. Uh, Phil, could you please kindly walk us through the treasurer's report? You, you must be on mute, Phil. No, we can see your lips. <laughs> uh, Phil, are you still there? You may have to log in and log out. It's, it yeah, says Phil is here. Try there muting and unmuting, maybe, or something's definitely up with the audio. Can you hear no. ah, there you are. We can we can barely okay. hear you, Phil. You can. Okay, let me get rid of this <laughs> fancy thing. Can you, still hear me? Can, you, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, my apologies. Uh, cash position uh, is six hundred fifty, just over six hundred fifty-three thousand uh, dollars. We we have payables of about just over one hundred thirty thousand, uh, leaving a cash. Balance of about five hundred twenty-two thousand. There, there will be a. Uh, we have. A, um, we'll, there will be another request for uh, funds to be advanced. Um, so that, you know, we we have plenty of cash on hand, and we have plenty of. Uh, we have about two point four million dollars worth of pre-construction funds that we haven't drawn down yet. So there are plenty of funds available to do what we need to do. We just need to keep an eye on it. Um, we will be talking to the bank about a line of credit just to help with cash flows. Um, we have a payroll uh, set up since we now have an employee. And uh, there is a compliance report, uh, excuse me, a compilation report in, uh, from the auditor that's uh, in the final stages of, uh, of, um, of its work. Uh, so, in a nutshell, that's sort of what's happening um, on uh, my side of the world. Any questions? Great, thank you. Uh, uh, no, I think no, that's, I think uh, that's uh, okay. Somebody needs to be on mute. No, I think that's fine, Phil. Thank you. Any, are there any questions for Phil out there? All right, let's. Uh, Let's move on because I know we're we're going to have lots to uh, talk about. Alan, is is there anything from the policy committee you'd like to bring up? I I know I I didn't ask you specifically, but I wanted to have something on there in case there was something you'd like to bring up. Uh, the one thing that I did want to bring up, but I unfortunately forgot to send out the proposed revisions to the grants policy. And I'm in the process of sending out an email to everybody with that attached. Do you want to pass over this now, or should we just put this off to the next meeting? I don't know if Ray, Ray, do you need this adopted really quickly, the revisions? Uh, the short answer is no. Okay, so why don't we hold that off? The only other thing I wanted to say about the policy committee is we are working on developing policies that will be necessary as we get closer to actually hooking people up. So we have been going through other websites and looking at what other CUDs have been doing around policies. And it's stuff like, you know, privacy policies. It's stuff like um, uh, procedures around if you want to build your a conduit to contain your wire, here's what you have to do, here are the standards. There are a couple of federal laws that we have to have policies related to. So we're just we're just making a list and people are starting to develop language that either is ready for one of our contractors maybe is going to eventually be the ones who have to look at this stuff. I'm sure we're going to have legal counsel look at it. Janiel might be able to to do that for us. Um, but we we hope to have these ready uh, this summer. So 
we're not standing around where we're come to the point where we have to have answers for things like what policies apply or what rights do do customers have uh, concerning your their interactions with CV fiber. Well, that, that's excellent. Thank you, Alan. I, I really appreciate that forward looking aspect to this as a, as opposed to reacting to the problems. Thank you. Much appreciated. So we'll we'll, we'll have something more to discuss at, at our at our next at our next meeting. Um, I I know that. Well, let me take a step back. Anything else for the policy committee? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you, Alan. I'll I'll move on then to the communications committee. This the the same same goes here. I'm pretty sure that Chuck had said that he wasn't going to be available. Um to 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 attend tonight's meeting but I wanted to have a placeholder any anyway is there anything from the communications committee that that needs to be reported in today's meeting uh, speaking as the vice chair of the committee nothing I know of okay thanks John that's uh that's good I maybe I have one thing to uh to add to the communications committee I just I just found out about an hour ago um I was re requested to testify before the Energy and Technology Committee uh, for the House this coming Friday. So I'll be there with other CUD members um, and also Will from Vicuda, Will Anderson from Vicuda to, to testify on uh, how we're spending our money. So that'll be, uh, that, that'll, that'll be a good thing. Uh, I see Ray and Linda. Go ahead, Ray. We'll start with you. Yeah, um, yeah, one thing is that we have these two front porch forum blasts that we're doing every month. Uh, we know that the end of the month, what we'll be doing is we're blasting out the newsletter that John uh, so uh, wonderfully puts together uh, that encompasses a lot of information about what we're doing. Uh, it seems appropriate that after this week, where we've had two executive committee meetings and a board meeting, that there's probably a sufficient amount of detail here that we could put something together that perhaps goes out next week. So we have a kind of an every other week rhythm to our uh, to our uh, front patch, front porch forum <laughs> blasts. Is, is that so, the schedule, Ray? Is it, well, is it is it twice a month? Is that what yes. we purchase twice yep. a month? OK, yep. and, and I'm, I'm sorry, Chuck isn't here to share with us the uh, the impact on the hits on the website from the previous two blasts that went out in during March because there was a significant uptick in the um, in the hits to the website, which is good, which means more people are becoming more informed about who we are and what we're doing. That's a good thing. And I think we'll see more of that um, from these next two, um, two uh, blasts that are going out. Excellent. Uh, Linda, you had your hand up and then you took it down. Is, do you want to add something? It's my turn. Uh, yeah. I was also going to talk about the Front Porch Forum issue. Um, John Walters and I are working on a communications plan uh, with a schedule of what we should be putting up for twice a month uh, front porch forum notices. And um, hopefully we will get that uh, solidified at the next communications meeting. We, we want to have a second idea in hand for every month so we don't uh, you know, squander any of our uh, paid for posts. Um, you know, so we're we're setting out a, a sort of a rough schedule of what we might be, you know, talking about when on front porch. Uh, it I think it's always subject to change uh, based on you know events, but we want to have at least something in the bank so that we so that we won't miss a, a paid for post. So that, we might that's, be that's... contacting you guys uh, in on the different committees. For information about more in information, so that we can put these uh, notices together. That that's a that's a that's a, a really good idea. I, I I I do appreciate that. Now let's see who who else has somebody else has their hand up, and I'm I'm having a little difficulty. RD. Who's I? R D. R D. Please go ahead. Well, as long as the communications committee is on the agenda, I should tell you that um, as of uh, April. Uh, this month's uh, communications committee meeting will be my last. I have to withdraw from the communications committee. I'm now serving on the Cabot Select Board, and uh, one of our local committees meets on the same 
night as the communications committee. And so I will be withdrawing from the communications committee. Uh, I'll continue to represent the town on the governing board, but I'm looking for a replacement since my workload is getting kind of crazy. Anyway, I thought I should tell you at this point. Uh, Thank that, you, R.D., for all the work you've done on the communications committee. Um, Linda, the amount of work that you and John have done dwarfs anything that I could possibly have thrown in the pot. <laughs> I don't believe it, R.D. <laughs> Ray, go ahead, please. Yeah, I was wondering whether R.D. wanted to announce uh, the news from Cabot. Well, uh, at this point, um, if you'd like me to, Cabot, the Cabot Select Board, um, voted to commit $50,000 of its ARPA funds to CV Fiber um, on the understanding that it would be matched, that we would have uh, some role to play in deciding how those funds will be spent and that they will all be spent in Cabot. And I am awaiting uh, further um, instructions on where, where, to, where to send the cash and when. We'll give you wiring instructions, no problem. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll set you up, R.D. Don't don't worry about that. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, you have a question? Uh, I'm more of a comment. That sounds like front porch forum post that might help get the ball rolling for other towns. Uh, How many perhaps? have have any other towns committed? Sort of. Not, not in, in the in the, there's a, there's a number of towns I mean, in the works. Yeah, Worcester, uh, East Montpelier. Yeah, Orange needs needs a request letter for a dollar amount. They they need a piece of paper. So I'm waiting for a piece of paper. Okay, um, Cabot hasn't waited for a piece of paper, um, but I would be grateful if we would hold off on the front porch forum announcement until. There is at least one other town who ha that has made a commitment. I don't want the Cabot Select Board to feel that they've uh, uh, they've gotten ahead of themselves or ahead of the rest of the district, even though we are. <laughs> uh, Tom, you have your hand up. Oh, you're on mute, Tom. Yep. Sorry, I was going to point out that we do have an agenda item on this. I think in two more agenda is coming up, so. It, it, it feels like much more. <laughs> it feels like we're in it. Um, so but why don't we keep rolling with the town ARPA since we're there and folks have been chiming in about their towns and, and we'll just skip over that item when we get to it. Um, Sh uh, Siobhan, do you want to finish up what you were saying before? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, w I went to the town called a special meeting. Orange called a special meeting. I attended that. Talked about, you know, various options and things like that. They're putting together a task group that is the goal is to collect a bunch of suggestions for how to spend the money. Um, I'm on that group and okay. we're meeting next week for the first time. So they but they definitely understand the urgency and the matching funds thing. They really want to do that. And so I was at the meeting saying, so if you give us two hundred thousand dollars, that'll be four hundred thousand dollars. That's almost a third of how much it's going to cost to build out in orange. Um, but at the end of the meeting, one of the select board members was saying, you're not getting $200,000. And I said, I know, <laughs> but, you know, I was just, you know, 100. throwing numbers up there. But I'm hoping that maybe we can get 50000 okay, And, so and Siobhan, are, you, do, you do have the, the uh, letter that describes the things that we can do for the town, the checklist? Yeah, they, they are, they are, that, they want a, a specific amount asked. They want a letter that says CV Fiber wants $50,000 for this purpose. They are they they just want to get internet into the town. And at this point, they're just they're they know that it's going to be a drop in the bucket anyway. Um, but they just want to get the fiber into town and they want to put the money to it. and They want to get the big bang for the buck and they want to get the matching funds. And so the specific details are less important than just having this piece of paper that they can then say, yes, we're going to do this. Um, we are okay, also putting so we'll together- Okay, we'll provide you, I'll, 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 get, I'll get you a letter that says, if you want this done, it will cost X. And and we'll just, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll make the selection for them. I, 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 can, I can do that. Yeah, uh, yeah Alan, I think, 
oh, getting sorry. the town connected, the, getting the town connected is is a the the town offices connected would be a good good thing because they're one of the things they're talking about is getting spending the money on getting the equipment so they can do hybrid meetings easily. So they want to get an owl and they want to get a big display and things like that. That's one of the things I'm pretty sure they're going to be spending this ARPA money on. So having a high speed connection to the town buildings is going to be very useful. Um, so I'm done. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll look into that I, I, and, and get you a letter that's, that states as much. I apologize for the dog barking in the background. Uh, Alan, your hand is up, sir. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, congratulate RD, you know, for getting Cabot as a as a contributor. Worcester also uh, uh, has committed, did it back in September to uh, contribute fifty thousand dollars. But I, I wanted to tell RD, you your action, the action by the town actually drafts you officially into an army of one with a no right of appeal. We have to keep pestering Ray and other people about getting the memorandum of understanding ready so we can actually grease the money coming over to us. So I, I know Ray Ray hates it when I send him, or David hates it when I send him another email saying, where is the MOU? But we got to keep moving that forward so we're all set to receive this money. Uh, understood, got it. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I am. Um... Well, rest of the board informed. I, I got a message from the town select board for East Montpelier, and I've, I've sent a, a message of it along to Jerry and Janiel, and I think Ray and I think David got in there. Mm -hmm. um, but the town, after hearing um, from Bonnie from um, CCR PC or whatever they are, um, DLCT. Yeah, oh, the RPC. Two, RPC. two more letters yeah. in there. Um, that. They are, they are being presented with the idea that they can take what is called a standard allocation on the ARPA funds and that by doing so, they can spend the money on just about anything in town following certain minor guidelines, but pretty much anything. And how that would work is that they can spend the ARPA money on that. They would still be taking for, for most town uses. They would still be taking in tax revenue and then they could use that tax revenue, which is now extra towards other projects that they would like to do. And so they're seeing this as a way to move forward. I don't know if that's accurate, but that is how they're interpreting it. And that is their intention. And they have to make a decision on this, I believe within the next 18 days, uh, if they want to take the standard allocation. Um, and Carl reached out to me this afternoon from the town select board again, um, that he is going to put forward, or he's trying to work together um, with CUDs to put forward something to the legislature to make for a one-time exemption from the ruling saying that CUDs have to take or cannot take uh, tax dollars um, for this one purpose of ARPA. So I don't know if, I don't know where all this lands, but I'm wondering, do we have a plan of action around this or at least a strong form of communication that we can give to the select boards on, on whether or not this is accurate and if we have a different view and evidence to back that up. And unfortunately, this is all on a fairly tight timeline. Um, I believe my town is going to be making a decision on this within the next week. So before we take other questions, is there anybody that can answer Tom's question directly? Uh, Ray, go ahead, and then I'll go to Christian. Thank you, Christian. The legislature will never, never let a town contribute tax dollars to CV Fiber under any limit, you know, one time, ever, ever, it just opens the floodgates of that. Uh, the only way that this can be done is through contributing the ARPA funds, which is what they should do. Then they can use their town tax money the way it's supposed to be used, because if they don't use the town tax money that way, they'll, they should give the tax money back if they're not going to use it. Okay, let's hear it. Lower the tax rate. Christian, go ahead, please, sir. Sure, uh, not to counter Ray at all, because I don't have the final ruling, but this is something we were discussing, and I, um, League of Cities and Towns is interpreting that, and this is coming in from their communications, that once the standard allocation has been taken, um, CUDs would still be a viable option because it's federal money, so they're not looking at whatever the rules were in Vermont last year, they're looking at what the rules were anywhere in the country. So. Take that with a grain of salt, but be in touch with the League of City and Towns. So they got their their legal minds on it. 
Very good. Thank you. Uh, Tom, do you want to close the loop on that discussion? Oh, yeah. Your hand is David still up, Tom. And David and RG were both flagging, so oh. I don't want to until okay. I've okay. heard what else to say. So, okay. I and mean, Linda's basically, been waiting it can all become an, if, if they do go the route that uh, Tom just described, it's basically making an allocation of town resources to CV fiber. And I don't, I mean, it's for services or for equipment. We can call it anything it is. It's buying something. It's not like they're donating to CV fiber. They're getting something in return. Okay. Uh, Linda? Uh, Chris Shank and I have gone before the Waterbury Select Board twice now, uh, and I believe we're going to be invited back on Monday the 18th. Usually they tell me on Friday before the Monday, uh, <laughs> but um, I think we're getting very close. So if you have that MOU ready, um, I'll take one to, uh, for Monday. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I see Jeremy Hansen put something in the in the uh, chat. Jeremy, do you want to speak to that? Um, sure. I I, <clears throat> I guess I, I disagree a, a bit with with Ray's assessment that this is a absolute positive non-starter. I think that because this is a special circumstance, I think the legislature could be convinced to to do this. I think the more conservative members um, would probably rebel against it, but I think there is a there may be a path to this. So just my two cents. Before I put my hand Alrighty. down here, um, Carl from from my uh, Carl Etner from East Montpelier has offered to work with anybody from CV Fiber who would like to work together on a legislative push or, or however you want to term it. Um, and is that something we are amenable to? And if so, who should I point him to? Uh, Will Anderson at uh, at uh, the CUDA. Uh, that's 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 probably a good idea because this isn't a CV fiber issue. This is a, a CUD issue. So that's a really good point. I'm going to go to RD and then I'm going to go to John Walters. Just uh, uh, briefly, let me uh, tell you what the history of um, of my approaches to the Cabot Select Board have been. I gave them I had an MOU. I think David gave me an MOU many, many months ago. Um, and I showed it to the select board. I said, this is this is what you can expect from CB Fiber. I said, it's not a final draft. Um, and I put in a request for $100,000. And I have been coming to the select board regularly, once, <laughs> once a month, once every couple of months, um, and renewing my request. Um, we also heard from Bonnie, uh, uh, what's her name, Weininger, from uh, CBRPC, but also on behalf of VLCT. The two of them are working in tandem. She told us about the standard option, which we we uh, will probably elect to uh, to take. Um, that doesn't affect our decision about making a commitment of ARPA funds to CV Fiber in any way. Um, it was it's allowable if we don't take the standard option, and it's allowable if we do. Um, I, so, uh, I, I'm not sure that I see any particular, um, benefit to CUDs in going for a legislative, um, a legislative option, um, when there is so much money coming down the pike and so much ARPA funds and, uh, and our towns should already have bought into CB fiber. That's why they're members. One footnote before I before I yield the floor is that on the same day or a couple of days later, um, the Cabot Town Office contracted with Spectrum for internet services. They dropped the, a line. They had dropped from their cable to CV to uh, to the town office. Um, and so the town has gone with with spectrum. I have no idea what's going to happen when CV fibers fiber optic comes <laughs> comes online. But um, but I expect them to save a pile of money and get um, vastly better service from spectrum than they're getting from consolidated. Um, but I I found that ironic. In any case, that's the history of of Cabot's uh, uh, commitment. Um, Thanks, RD. 
Thanks. Uh, John, I'll let you close out this conversation so we can move on to the next item. Well, it's kind of a conclusion remark. Um, the, the League is one of the best connected lobbying operations in the State House. So they usually know what they're talking about. Uh, it does seem a little iffy, and I think we definitely need clarification on this. And I think probably VQDA needs clarification on this. And the broadband board needs clarification on this. If the league is going around pushing this or offering it to towns, um, we better be clear that it's something we can do. So I don't know who that's for, but uh, that needs to be looked into. Thanks. No, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that's our path forward. So thank you, John. I appreciate that. Uh, let, let, let's move on to our uh, materials purchase update, and and I'll take this, or at least I'll I'll start this. Um, we we have been working with NRTC um, on on doing a I'll call it a mid level design. It's certainly far more than the high level design that we did with Vantage Point, where we're we're at the next level of design prior to doing a detailed design. But out of this design work and based on the uh, uh, experience that that has been shown with NEK that's a little bit ahead of us and ahead of us in some of our uh, procedures here, we're we're building a, a bill of materials for approximately 400 miles of fiber. And we are looking to um, make a purchase through the VCBB as as they have allowed this type of purchase for pre-construction that we are we are looking to put in this uh, an RFP for this bill of materials and the point of doing this now is that we know what we need based on our designers um, working on this and we know that there are long lead times to getting some of this material so we're we're, we're putting in a, a purchase order within the next couple of weeks, and we will be we will be doing this not with the highest, not with the fine detailed level of design, but that's okay because we can true that up later. We're good. We have we have many more miles to go after we've purchased this this equipment. But there's a couple of things that go along with this, and again, this is just as an update. Um, one of the things that that goes along with this with this purchase is that we uh, we're going to go out with an RFP and we think that NRTC might want to bid on providing this material along with other services that go with warehousing and inventorying this material. And because that might be the case, we're using uh, another contractor that we already have, MBI. Our intention is to use them to put out the RFP. So we, we have uh, separable and separate entities that will be working for us and we won't have NRTC bidding on their own RFP, if you will. Uh, so I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that we're working on, on clear lanes of, of agency here. And then I also wanna add that it's not just getting the materials, uh, once you get the materials, not only do they have to be warehoused, but that inventory needs to be managed. And that's not a passive thing. That's a very active thing, inventory management for something like this, because your construction crews on a daily basis are going to be taking from bins and, and loading trucks and going out into the field. And somebody needs to be taking care of that inventory and managing it. And then, of course, we also have to make sure that it's all insured and that it's all in a safe place that has security. All of these things are going on at the same time. Uh, uh, Janil has spent a, a, a big part of her past 48 hours working on just these kinds of issues about insurance and security and following up on the work that, that we've already started to make sure that we close the loops on all of these loose ends that need to be knitted together to create the rope that we need to uh, to pull this thing along with. Uh, so that that's that's what I wanted to put out there as an as an update. And um, David or Ray, Janiel, is there anything you'd like to add to that? 
Um, yeah, so we're we're talking about fence rentals, fence purchases, uh, getting the insurance quotes, all that stuff went out um, for for insurance, um, and and as far as identifying the uh, identifying the fiber as ours, uh, we we are we have a plan for that to just make sure that it's identified um, and secured. And uh, all that is happening very quickly in advance of the delivery date. We think it could happen tomorrow, but it might not. We do know that we have security for the first 11 that are going to be delivered. Um, so we're, we're in good shape for the first 11. And then next week, as we get more, we, we're procuring fence rentals or purchases. Yeah, allow me to clarify there, because I, I, was, I was talking about the the nuts and the bolts and the hangers and the and the wire that's needed to hang the fiber and, and that materials purchase, which also includes uh, the cabinets that we need and, and that kind of hardware material, outside plant material. And what Janiel was just talking about is very much related. And that is the actual fiber delivery that we should be getting this week um, that that we that we have been that we have been uh, working on to make sure that everything is secured there. We've been working with WEC so that we have a place to house it and, and WEC has the equipment to offload the trucks, et, et, et cetera. So there's, there's uh, the 11 units that were mentioned there, RD, are the 11 spools, the first 11 spools of fiber that, that, that we're getting. And they're, they're not the same size spools that you used to use uh, when you had an apartment back there in 1971 that you used for a coffee table, they, these things are quite large, um, and and they they will be secured at a at a wet facility. Ray, let me go on to you, sir, please. Yeah, a couple of things. One is that uh, the 11 spools represent about 45 miles out of the 300 plus miles that we're getting between now and September. Uh, we were told that for 400 miles of um, uh, materials those nuts, those bolts, the strand, et cetera, et cetera. We would need a, like a 7,000 square foot warehouse. We would need four or five acres to put all the rest of these outdoor materials in. For example, we may not be doing this um, uh, alone. We may wind up doing it collectively with other CUDs. And so there's a whole lot of things in play, but things have to happen real fast because uh, we're gonna start getting deliveries of this material, July, August, September right, perhaps through the rest of the year. And so um, um, Janiel's got a lot of work in front of her. <laughs> Thank you, Janiel. Absolutely. Uh, uh, before I take a question, just let me close here with uh, as, scatters, as, as scattered as that may have sounded, it is actually all coming together um, pretty well. So we, we, we are a half a step of all of the things that are befalling us here. Uh, Jeremy, your hands up. Yeah, I don't know that it really needs a response, but just want to make sure that we don't forget the kind of making sure that no stray wires, et cetera, end up in farmer's fields type problems. Um, just want to make sure when we're talking about equipment that that's kind of in people's minds. Abs ab absolutely. Um, that, that, that was, of course, a construction issue with the, with the residual wires that they had left around, but, but understood, fully, fully understood. Uh, and actually, one of the things that we've been telling our, our contractors that are out in the field, and right now that would be our poll inventory folks, is we, 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 we do talk to them very specifically about, you know, they're, they're actually the face the, the people on the ground with CV fiber on the side of their truck out there. Um, so we, we, we expect the appropriate behavior from them, but that's, but you're, you're certainly on, on the, on the mark there with that Jeremy. RD, your hand is up. Is that left over or do you have something you want to mention here? And you're on mute RD. Okay. The hand is down. All right. I, I take it that was that. Uh, anything else on our materials purchase? Okay, great. Then the, the, the next action we have is the executive committee charter revision. And I had put this uh, text up on the, on the read ahead area for tonight's meeting. I don't know if anyone had the opportunity 
to look at it. It's something that we've been working on at the uh, executive committee for quite some time, quite a few meetings we've, we've, we've rolled through this. Uh, I'm gonna pass this over to Ray to, to walk through if that's okay with you, Ray. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'd, I'd like to start actually with the, uh, the motion and then get into the details, okay? I just want you to uh, see uh, where we're coming from, uh, where we hope to get at at the end of this, and then we can go through the uh, we can go through the details of the of the uh, charter itself, and I'll share my screen. But um, the the motion the motion notices that, for example, that um, uh, it, the governing board has the authority to delegate to any of its committees uh, powers. And so you, the governing board has done this in the past. All of our committees have uh, charters and all of those charters have certain powers uh, delegated to them. And so this is just another, uh, we're amending the executive committee charter as it currently stands. Um, I wanted to note that, you know, the executive committee are people um, that they're, they're the chairs, the vice chair, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, and these are people, frankly, that the governing board has ratified the appointments of the chairs of each of those committees. So it's not like you haven't had a role. The governing board hasn't had a role in the in the committees themselves. And in, in addition to the fact that it's the governing board who appoints the members of the committees, right? So that uh, the governing board is behind uh, all of this. Um, the, gov the executive committee is meeting, it has regular meetings now twice a month. Um, I think we've already met twice this month, <laughs> and I think we're going to meet, you know, one or more, two more times because it's it's fire hose time, and and there's an awful lot of work, and um, uh, so we we need to keep up with what's what's dynamically happening. There's a lot that's happening and changes every day. We're getting missives from the broadband board and Rob Fish. We're getting stuff from NRTC, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to do, and so. Um, because of that, because of that workload, um, we are recommending that uh, the the governing board grant certain powers to the um, to the um, uh, executive committee. And I'm going to share my screen here, and uh, let's see. So here here is the um, proposed charter, um, and uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, the executive committee oversees, manages, and coordinates the implementation of the board's actions, including the day-to-day -day operations of CV Fiber. Uh, responsibilities over, oversee the op implementation of the board's decisions, oversee, coordinate the work of the CV Fiber committees. So all of the work of the CV Fiber committees will be uh, will be come through the executive board for the executive board to take action on, and for those for the executive committee to recommend to the board those things that uh, the board should take action on. Um, this is a, this is the uh, same power that existed before. Engage and oversee the work of th uh, third parties, attorneys, consultants, financial agents, etc. Um, let's see, take such action to oversee, manage the day-to-day -day operations, uh, not limited to the adoption of procedures and protocols to govern CV fiber activities. So what are we talking about here? So for example, the governing board has approved the internal financial controls policy. Um, uh, and I've drafted and I've worked with the finance committee and with our accountant, et cetera, to develop um, implementation procedures for those internal controls. It's similar to the, you know, the, the federal government passing a law and then all the agencies then adopt regulations and rules in order to implement the law, right? So we need some details worked out. The executive committee is in the best position to do that. Um, manage the budget. Well, that's uh, that's what you expect. Uh, and I also propose uh, budget amendments. Oversee, manage, and prioritize the work of the executive director, who shall report to the governing board chair. Uh, make appointments to committees, including board members and volunteers. Now, and this is actually this is actually the wrong one, and 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 this is not this. And Jerry is Jerry has got his head in his hands already, and 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 let me let me get let me get the right one. But the reason this is the wrong one is this this doesn't this was deleted by the executive by the executive committee. This section here was deleted. Make appointments to committees. 
the executive committee said, nope, we, uh, we don't want to do that. The board should continue to do that. And let me find, and I'll be right back. Um, is there some music or something we can play in the background? Let's see. Here. I just play music. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Let me make, make sure this is it here. Because Jerry you want to not share your screen, Ray, because you're sharing confident something that's marked confidential. Well, you know, it, it's it is confidential. I'm too. just saying. Yes. I mean, no, no longer confidential. Here we go. I, I, we've got the right one up here. Okay, so here's so missing is that thing that said about uh, making appointments. So G instead of being that is making a recommendation to the board concerning the withdrawal or admission of additional district members. This is, uh, frankly, many of these items here have come directly from the statute, which identifies what the district powers are, okay? So here, it's not that, it's not that the executive committee is going to actually admit or, or allow the withdrawal of somebody. They're actually going to make the recommendation uh, and help uh, vet the process. And Jerry is looking at the ceiling. Um, <laughs> Uh, approve the submission of grant applications, amendments to grant awards, um, et, et cetera. Issue requests for proposal and bids and enter into any contracts or for any term or duration consistent with the Z, CV fiber procurement policy. The procurement policy, as you may recall, which the board adopted um, just a few months ago, indicates that procurements in excess of $250,000 must come to the board. OK, and procurements that are off the budget between ten thousand and two hundred fifty thousand dollars have to come to the board. So those things, those important things are still going to come uh, to the board. Uh, solicit and administer uh, gifts, grants and bequests. Um, that's also something of the statute. Make contract with the state of uh, the state of Vermont, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the IL here, approve the use of grant anticipation notes and other short-term financial mechanisms as appropriate except bonds to advance the development of the network. So we're not talking about bonds. We're not talking about borrowing, allowing the executive committee to approve the issuance of a bond that for millions and millions of dollars, which will, um, uh, for which we'll be responsible for, for a period of 10 to 20 years, for example. What we're talking about are short-term financial mechanisms like the grant anticipation notes, which are basically notes that one uses to get a line of credit or to borrow money from an institution like a bank uh, in anticipation of receiving some grants. And typically these grant anticipation notes are 364 days. That's what the statute says. They can be rolled over, but they're short-term. Uh, reports, of course, uh, report to the board, uh, meetings, special meetings, uh, membership. So membership, uh, chair, vice chair, committee chairs and clerk, executive director, treasurer will be uh, ex officio members, non-voting members, executive committee, as will the clerk if they're not a member of the board. Uh, and the chair of the governing board shall be the chair of the executive committee. Happy to answer any questions. My apologies for getting the wrong up there in the first instance. Jerry. You're on mute. Oh, I, I, I said, how did you know I was going to raise my hand? So the 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 one thing I want to add, because I, I don't know if it if it if it comes through when you when you look through this, is that we're we're our intention here is to balance flexibility with accountability. And what we what we need to be able to do is since we're not going to get a quorum three or four times a month with the with the governing board is to be able to move as much as we reasonably can through the executive committee. Uh, but the governing board is still the one that is plotting the navigation course, even though the executive committee might have their hand on the tiller. It's the it's the governing board that is laying out the navigation course for us uh, because they control the budget. They control who's on the executive committee, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but there are a number of hands uh, lining up here. So I'm going to start with Jeremy and then I'm going to move to Tom Fisher and then I'll get to the others. 
Go ahead, Jeremy. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I, I guess my comment is, I'm getting a bunch of feedback, not anymore, there we go. Um, I guess my, my comment here is, or my question is, I've, I've obviously been a member of the executive committee. I understand the motivation here. What do you envision the purpose of the overall governing board being? Because this seems like um, almost nearly everything that's in statute that the CV Fiber Governing Board is empowered to do is being uh, kind of passed passed along to the executive committee. And I, I guess I, I, I don't disagree that some streamlining is necessary. It just seems like having some clarity about what's the board's role. I mean, is it going to meet once a month and say, well, you're doing a great job. And then we, then we punch, punch the clock and we're done by 6.15 or what, what is the ongoing role of the governing board to be with this charter change? So let, let me let me give a, a a first response to that, and and that is I I was uh, trying to do this maritime analogy here. Um, we we have a, a set of guidelines, implementation guidelines, if you will, or policies that are in place that set the certainly set monetary limits on what the governing board can approve. So a lot of um, reading of, the, of this uh, charter is recommend, recommendation to the governing board and, and not necessarily totally taking the action from the governing board. And I think the governing board having the ability to say yay or nay to virtually all expenditures um, over ten thousand dollars, and certainly if they're outside of the budget, and then having the approval and the development of the budget, mostly the approval being with the governing board, and then the expenditures from that budget being with the governing board, and the identification of members of the executive committee being with the governing board. Um, I, I think there's 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 quite a lot of uh, of discretion left to the governing board on how we move forward. Um, but I, I must say that we are in an environment where decisions decisions need to be made on a very regular basis, and what we need the governing board to do is set the parameters that within these parameters, the decision can be made by the executive committee. And, and from, from that, allow the, the executive committee to move forward. And, and just let me give one case in point here. Actually, I shouldn't even say one case in point. I can give three cases in point that are coming up on the rest of our uh, agenda tonight. And each of those items has been through a working group a committee, the executive committee, and now coming to the governing board. But once that gets to the governing board and is approved, where the expectation is, now that the governing board is said has said, get me from here to our destination, the executive committee will make those minor course corrections to get to that, that destination. Um, and b before I go down the list of folks with their hands up, is there anybody that wants to directly address what was mentioned by Jeremy? Okay, but let, let me go to David Healy, who's been very patient. Yeah, I have two questions. One for, I guess, one for both, probably for Ray, maybe Jerry. Can you give an example of what change would happen from something we've done in the past year? that would be reflected in this new policy. And the second one, who is authority for applying for grants? Who, who would have the authority for applying for grants? Yep. In, in this, uh, in this um, it is um, an item here, uh, H, approve, approve the submission of grant applications, amendment to grant awards, blah, blah, blah. So the, okay. the executive committee would have that authority. I yeah, give some examples of um, 
yes, yeah, so I can give some examples for it coming up on this Thursday night's executive committee agenda if this passes, and that is this. Uh, uh, the governing board approved entering into a contract with uh, Mission Broadband. On, on Thursday night, if this passes, the executive committee will be taking action on whether or not to issue award work orders to Mission Broadband to do things like the RFP for materials, to do the uh, poll inventory um, application work that needs to be done. And uh, there's also another issue having to do with uh, negotiating with contract with transport uh, contractors, for example. Those that's the level of detail uh, work that the executive committee is is drilling down on on a regular basis. That is not the kind of work that the board has sufficient background um, or time um, and uh, with with the possibility of not having quorums on a monthly meeting, we expose ourselves to not being able to go through the wickets in a timely fashion that we need to. So that those those are just a couple of examples. That's perfect. No, thank thanks, Ray. I'm going to go to Tom Fisher next. Tom, thank you. Um, I have some of the same reservations as Jeremy had uh, looking through this, um, seeing seeing that there are. Quite a number of things in here that seem to have previously been board items that are now being uh, subsumed under the executive committee and on one hand i'm hesitant to bring it up because i think there is a lot of quick action that needs needed right now and i understand the need for the executive board to be able to act and they're the ones with the expertise and background knowledge to be able to do that action in a timely and effective manner at the same time this is a document that is going to stand until there's a reason to change it and that reason is probably not going to be one that we like if it's something like someone coming in and saying, oh, the executive committee has the ability to solicit and accept grants. Um, and then they do that in a way that is not something that's in accordance with the board's wishes. Um, and so I'm concerned that the way this is written, it has the potential for somewhere down the line it being abused um, in ways that we've unfortunately seen in Vermont. And I'm hesitant to, to grant the executive committee this power and not have it be some sort of check on it or, or time limit or some other way to prevent this from being something that down the road is going to bite us. Tom, let me ask you, is there, is there a specific line item that you, is there a word change that you want to recommend? Word change would take some time. I can point out where I see issues, but OK. Um, yeah, so this the is adoption, so of, I, adoption of policies and procedures and protocols uh, that they feel necessary to manage day to day operations. The adoption of policies has kind of always been a, a board item. Um, the ability to uh, go after solicit, accept or administer gifts or grants um, is something that I could see easily abused. Um, one one of the I guess point about these is it says the executive um, the executive committee will. And is this intended to mean that as a group, there must be a majority vote for something along these lines to happen? Or will there be cases where an individual like the chair of the executive committee would be able to make a call or, or represent the board? In some no, the, the executive committee works in the same way as the uh, governing board in that there must be a quorum and there are votes for each. It, it works in the, un, in the exact same way. Uh, rules of order. Uh, let, let me let me move on to Phil. You've had your hand up. Go ahead, Phil. OK, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, I think it, I, it makes a lot of sense to have a separation uh, between uh, what I'll say operational decisions and strategic long term planning decisions. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to have a well-informed core group uh, that's made up, I'll say, of department heads or committee chairs that uh, can think and coordinate uh, across different disciplines, if you will, uh, to make sure that everything's represented uh, fairly. To do that level of decision making uh, with a full board, um, I don't know if any of you have edited documents with more than, well, more than two people, it gets cumbersome. With with five or ten people, it gets impossible. Um, 
I see it the same way of trying to make decisions, um, operational decisions. And that's really the difference here. It's almost this, it's almost making the executive uh, committee uh, staff and uh, the, keeping the board uh, focused on the, on the bigger long-term perspective. I, I really like that analogy. Um, thank you, Phil, because I, I, I wanna make one, one statement about the executive committee um, basically the, the folks that are on the, or, or there are four people on the executive committee that have basically been working full-time, maybe full-time plus, and I, I, I truly mean over 40 hours a week. Um, and that's what it takes to make this thing happen. And that is part of the rationale behind what, what, what we're asking here. Um, not everybody on the executive committee is able to do that, and some of them are ex officio, so they 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 don't vote. But they're they're it 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 takes a level of involvement that the folks on the general board just don't have the luxury. They may want to, they may love to, but they simply only have so many hours in the day. Um, and that's that's part of the driver behind this. And I really like the analogy of looking at the executive committee almost as the staff of the governing board. That that really makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go to R.D. and then Jeremy and then Ray, please. Thank you, Terry. Um, uh, I. I think it's probably useful to look at this um, proposed charter in the context of the uh, other board documents, the, the board's bylaws. For example, I'm looking at this, I'm wondering how many members are there on the executive committee? Uh, is there a minimum number of members uh, and what, hence what constitutes a quorum? Um, I suppose all that could be found in, in the bylaws. Um, uh, but I haven't referred to the bylaws. I think it may be important for um, uh, for governing board members to familiarize themselves with how this charter fits in with all of the other documents, all of the other chartering and empowering documents. Um, and um, um, I mean, I do share uh, Tom's uh, reservations about um, uh, adopting policies, procedures, and protocols. My impression has been that uh, that there is a policy committee that formulates policy and presents those policies to the full board for its approval. Um, on the other hand, I think Phil is correct, and I've seen this in other um, nonprofits, that you need a, a, a essentially a staff to manage and conduct the day-to-day -day operations of the um, of of the organization and the charter for the executive committee ought to give it exactly as much authority as it needs to fulfill that fundamental purpose. Um, so while I have some reservations, um, uh, I if, if if this needs to be advanced expeditiously, I'm prepared to vote for it. Um, but I haven't. In, I haven't done all of my homework in familiarizing myself with the entire um, or refamiliarizing myself with the entire governing landscape of CB fiber. That's my comment. Th thank you, RD. Your comments well taken. I, I don't know if you can see the screen or if you're only doing this by phone, RD, but uh, no, I can. Ray, Ray has highlighted the membership. It's the the executive committee is the chair. Uh, the vice chair of the governing board, and then the chairs of all the other committees, um, plus the treasurer and the executive director and the um, uh, the clerk, if the clerk is not also a a uh, a member of the governing board. Uh, so so I believe I am up to Jeremy, Matt, and then Ray. Yeah, so, oops, uh, shoot, I hit the wrong dang thing. Um, meant to lower my hand and it was on the wrong window. Uh, so one thing that I would note for uh, the, the one that's come up a lot with Tom and uh, just now with RD is approving policies. That that sounds overly broad. I, 
I agree. But if you read what it says, it says approved policies in accordance with the procurement policy. So the, the, procure, the procurement policy is a document that is in a lot of ways kind of dictated to us by statute. Um, and, you know, we don't really have much choice. It's just, you know, we need to do things to implement that. Um, so I think that's what that item is talking about. It's not sort of broad, you know, policy, you know, we're going to, you know, adopt the, I don't know, whatever policy governing, you know, gifts to board members or whatever. That's not what this is talking about. Um, my other thing was, I had a question for for Tom. You said something about uh, the being able to accept um grants and gifts as being open for abuse and, and that it sounded like you had examples of that happening um is that something that you could share uh, i don't find an exact example that matches that i was thinking in general there have been abuses of power within nonprofit organizations within vermont within the last 10 years i think there's various headlines you can look okay. at that um, as far as the the policies comment there is a i was looking at up the citation here, uh, section B1 uh, D is saying take actions, such actions as appropriate to oversee, manage, and direct the day to day operations of CB Fiber, including but not limited to the adoption of policies, procedures, and protocols to govern CB Fiber activities. There's no reference there to anything else that I can tell. Oh, whoops, I was looking at item two, which is the governing policies contract awards in accordance with adopted procurement policy um okay yeah never mind i take that back so should the word operations adoption of operational policies procedures and protocols yeah i think some sort of language like that would help to to limit but still allow Ray, are you ready to uh, chime in here before I go to David Went and Alan Gilbert? Yes, please. Uh, several things. Um, Tom, the executive committee is a consensus organization. There's seven, seven or more of us here, ex consensus organization. And let me let me give you an example. We had a meeting on the 28th of March, and I had a proposal before the committee. And while the committee would have voted for it there were still some reservations and I withdrew it and we, we had the meeting last night and uh, took care of all those reservations and we all got on the same page. Um, secondly, uh, it's the executive committee is an open meeting and anytime we go into executive session, I can't recall a time when we didn't bring allow any uh, board member to also participate be in the executive session. We don't vote in executive session anyway, but they had an opportunity for input. They could listen, uh, et cetera. And then we always, if we take any action outside of executive session, um, they're there as well to um, to comment, for example. Obviously, they don't vote. Um, the second, the last thing is this. Can I just respond to that? Yeah, please. Um, I'm not in any way trying to accuse the executive committee of you know clandestine operations or anything right. like that i'm saying this is a document that is going to live as part of our documentation for the next hopefully 100 years um and i was just concerned that there are parts in here that read like if someone is overseeing the the third party contractors is that something that's being done as a group or is that something that's being done by the chair or i'm just trying to get some clarification on different components of this document and making sure that it is intending what you want it to intend because sure. i want Excellent. this to be an effective document that lets you do what you want to do so the the third party contract is by the way was in the original uh in the original charter and um we have a process by which uh, if it's poll inventory work david healy accepts the work uh, the executive committee approves the bill Right uh, in this process now, we're going to be folding Janiel into this, and so uh, over many of these contracts, Janiel will have contract oversight, for example. Okay, but subject matter experts like uh, Dave of the GIS and poll inventories may continue to uh, provide uh, input with regard to the acceptance, and and the and the so I wasn't I wasn't thinking that you were actually thinking that we were doing something clandestine, et cetera. 
But I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that the meetings are open to any board member. We make them publicly available and they can they can participate. We always go into executive session on, on certain things and they can participate. The last thing is on, on D, uh, the executive committee will D take such actions appropriate to oversee, manage and direct the day to day operations of CV fiber, including but not limited to the adoption of policies, procedures and protocols. I'm happy with it to withdraw the language of policies. So it says the adoption of procedures and protocols to govern CV fiber activities. And hopefully that will um, uh, alleviate some of the concerns about uh, whether or not the executive committee is usurping what is appropriately a board role. Uh, it was intended, intended to be limited uh, to certain things, but frankly, I think we can get to what we need to get to with procedures and protocols. Uh, for example, on Thursday night, our implementation guidelines for the um, internal financial controls policy that was adopted by the board. And those guidelines talk about who signs off on stuff, how they have to sign off on stuff, what the auditing process is. Uh, that isn't a board kind of a thing. We They gave us the policy and this, these are processes and things that we have to implement in order to make that, that policy work. So I'm happy to, uh, when I make the motion, to make the motion to um, that would not include of policies um, for the for the um, charter change. That, that that sounds good, Ray. Thank you. Before before we get that far, I have David Went and then Alan Gilbert both have their hands up. So David, go ahead, sir. Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah. And first, just to recognize the exceptional work that the executive committee has been doing and and the amount of work that that is done by that group um and uh, I, I wonder and forgive me for not being um intimately familiar with the the details of the the policies um governing the executive committee but if there wouldn't be a value um or if it's already been done in terms of identifying what specific decisions and actions um the executive committee needs to explicitly bring to the board um, or sorry, report to the board in the um, in the governing board uh, uh, report backs from the different committees. Um, and I say that knowing that there's the executive committee meeting minutes, all the meetings are open to the board members to attend, but the sheer volume of content and the amount of expertise that's required, I think, for the members of means that a lot of the there may be things and decisions that are taken where um, or some of these powers, just having that ability to ensure that the board is explicitly informed about those decisions as they're taken, um, just to make sure that there doesn't, I think that those concerns that um, uh, Tom was raising about how it could evolve into a situation or down the road, something could come up where people feel like the executive committee is not acting, following the strategic intent of the board. Um, 50 years from now or 20 years from now or 10 years from now, um, but trying to figure out and I would be in favor of adopting this and having the executive committee look at it and identify what are the things that really need to the board needs to be aware of and paying attention to and making sure that those things are explicitly part of the the report back informally um, within the policies of the executive committee that those are things that are required to be in the report to the board. Thanks. Th th thank you, David. I appreciate that. And and you know this there there is a little bit of a two way street here, in that when when there's an executive committee meeting, there is a there the meeting is warned, and it's it the announcement is to the entire governing board, not just to the executive committee. So the meeting is warned to the entire governing board. The minutes are taken. The meeting is recorded, and it it if. If the governing board feels that there is something going on at the executive committee level, and this is all thoroughly transparent, if there's anything going on, then the governing the 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 governing board can say, "Help, you know, we need to make a change here." And the governing board can certainly change what the executive committee is allowed to do. We're asking at this point. For the for the governing board to make a change to the allow the executive committee to adapt to what it sees are the needs of the moment, um, but it may be the case that in three months or in thirty months or never, 
that the governing board feels that, you know, we've been looking over the shoulder of the executive committee and we would like to pull in the reins on this item. And that is always available. Uh, this is totally open. Um, and the idea here really is to be able to make decisions on an operational basis less than once a month, more frequently than once a month. Um, so I'll stop there and I'll go to Alan. Go ahead, Alan, please. Alan, I believe you're still on mute. Gee, I'm sorry you didn't hear the four score and seven years ago opening there. Um, <laughs> Tom, I, I, I appreciate your, your bringing this question up and it's one, believe me, I, I, I've been struggling with. I'm, I'm the chair of the policy committee, so I'm on the executive committee. I also for 12 years was the executive director of an organization that went through exactly what CV Fiber is going through at the present time. And that is changing from a bottoms up volunteer led organization with no professional staff to an organization that is now hiring professional staff and is making lots of contracts um, with any of a number of vendors. So in, in making that transition from a, from a citizen-led board member um, overseeing operation to one that's different is really difficult. And it's gonna continue to be difficult for some time because those of us who have been around for a while on the board are so used to expecting the board to do all kinds of things that slowly is going to have to transmit. It's going to have to be given over to to other people to be doing. And that's that's a really hard change to make. I will say I'm now reading this language that you've pointed to in a way different than I did when I was at the executive committee meeting where we talked about this specific section, section D. And I would agree, this sounds like, this is Vladimir Putin able to take over not only just Ukraine, but most of the world, you know, take such actions as appropriate to oversee, manage and direct the day-to-day -day operations of CV fiber, da 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 da. I think there's something wrong with the way the language is trying to say something it's not what's really there because frankly that the adoption of procedures and protocols is incorrect what's meant is that the executive committee has to approve a policy to go on to the full board after the executive committee has done its due diligence of looking at the policy and being able to make a recommendation to the board what it thinks the board should be doing about it. That is clearly not communicated in that section D. And I, if I, I believe me, what I intend, I'm, I'm the last person in the world to say it's fine if a committee, a specific committee that's not the board can adopt policies and procedures. That's not, I, I, I that, that, that can't happen. Policies, procedures, and, and, and protocols have to be adopted by the whole board. And we have to figure out some way to get this language more sharp so that that's 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 what's stated and that's what's understood because i think you're right the way you interpreted it was not the way that it was meant to be but i can see why you would do that so i appreciate you bringing this up so can, can we can we change that language right now to to um to to put a to you know put what a period? I you know what I would do? Go ahead, I, Alan, please. I would, I would change it to simply the opening, the opening part of the sentence. Take such actions as appropriate to oversee, manage, and direct the day-to-day -day operations of CV Fiber, period. And that, then, that, that's, a, that's exactly where I was going. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Alan. And, and, then, then, and, then, and then if there are problems that come up in the way this is actually, this 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 fairly broad statement is being used, then it can come up and the board can discuss whether or not the executive committee was right in doing some taking some action that the board thinks should have had more review. I think 
my my conception of the executive committee was it was trying to put together a whole bunch of the difficult work and have at least a recommendation come what should be done next for the full board to consider because there are so many details on so much of what's happening now that it would be as jerry and others have said it would be impossible for a board of five seven let alone 20 people to make the whole thing work um i'm 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 frankly not real happy with saying that the executive committee is going to take actions as appropriate to oversee manage and direct direct the day-to-day -day operations of CV Fiber. Yet we just hired an executive director. In my experience of working on nonprofits, when you hire an executive director, this is the language that you would put in the job description and then the responsibilities of the executive director. And I'm not reading it again, you know, I'm I'm not quite sure if we really mean to do this. Uh, th this is we want to make sure the board is not doing the overseeing, managing, and directing, especially the directing of the day-to-day -day operations, that's that's not what we want to be doing. Uh, I, I concur. It's not the board. The intention was not for the board to be doing that. The intention was for the executive committee to be doing that through the executive director. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go now. Let's see. I got a lot of hands up again. I'm going to go to Tom, RD, and then Jeremy, please. I like those suggestions, Alan. Uh, I think there might be others I would make. Um, I, having just gotten this email apparently at 11 this morning and seen it at five this afternoon when I got off work and had all of about an hour to eat dinner with my kids and review this while doing that at the same time, I would prefer to have more time to review this. I understand we're trying to, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time here. Um, but if it's not something that we have a super high priority need to get this out the door now, I would prefer to have this linger so we can have some time to really dive into this. Well, allow me to remind you that when we tried to do a special meeting, we did not get a quorum. So are we waiting for a month to consider these actions? Uh, just just putting that out there. Let me go to uh, that, that was uh, my who's question next? To you. You, you was it my question to me. My question was, is this something that we need to get out now or is this something that does not? Because I'm willing to potentially, you know, us move forward with this. I just don't have the information of whether or not this is something that we can take the time on or that we don't. I, I appreciate that. I, I, if we can if we can amend this now, that would be quite excellent so that we can move forward with 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 the bulk of it. Um, that would be quite excellent. But let, let me go to R.D. and then Jeremy, Matt and then Ray, please. I would be happy with Ray's emendation to drop policies from uh, paragraph uh, uh, B1D um, just and just ask the board, um, imagine what would happen if our executive director resigned um, or was injured and couldn't fulfill her functions. Um, somebody would have to step in and manage and oversee and direct the day-to-day -day operations of CV Fiber. So I think we're authorizing the executive committee to do that and relying on the executive committee to fulfill its function with respect to the executive director. Um, I, I'm, 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 com I'm perfectly comfortable with the dropout of policies that Ray suggested. Uh, however, let me also point out that in uh, part A, uh, where is it, part A, um two the cv fiber governing board approves policies well does the, the does the uh, oh the governing board approves excuse me i withdraw my comment i thought it was referring to the executive committee i'm happy with raising mandations and i think we should vote and uh, and get this out the door uh, thank you rd that's 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 helpful uh jeremy please go ahead and and after you is is ray i believe yeah, mine will be quick. Um, my recommendation would be to edit uh, that item D and and move the adoption of, or rather than um, have the, the the executive committee adopt policies and procedures, have it read something like uh, recommended to the to the governing board 
uh, adoption of policies, procedures, and protocols. Um, because I do think that there is a space for the for the executive committee to recommend to the board policies, procedures, et cetera, that should be adopted. Um, my two cents. Thanks. No, you're 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 absolutely right in that, and that 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 is that is the the, the typical procedure. Ray, uh, there's been a lot of discussion here. I don't, I can't quite tell if you've. It looks like you're doing some uh, some changes to the text. Are we getting close to making a a, a motion here? Where so are we, Ray, on this? My take my takeaway on this is that. Um, uh, that the that the board is concerned that we might be uh, trampling on some things that ought to be left to the board's discretion in and the use of the word policy was probably um, uh, not not well uh, well considered uh, in this particular in this particular section here and one asked if we didn't take action tonight what would the impact be the impact would be on Thursday night the executive committee wouldn't be able to take action on six things. Uh, the impact of making this deletion here, um, uh, and let me just let me just reject that for a second. Um, uh, procedures and protocols would mean that we would be able to take action on one thing: the implementation guidelines for the internal controls, internal financial controls. Um, but I'm prepared to uh, jettison all of this um, in order to salvage the, the rest of it. I th if my preference would be, however, would be to uh, delete this and leave it and leave it like that. Need to get rid of a comma after procedures if you do that. Yeah, there goes that uh, Oxford comma that we don't need anymore because mm -hmm. we have three things in a row, right? So that 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 would be my preference. How how about if we make it make the motion, Ray, and see. As opposed to be, and maybe there's a friendly amendment that will 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 come up with an additional change. Uh, let's let's go through the motion. Okay, so um, let me let me re put the motion back in the. Is that it there? Yeah. Uh, let's get that back over here. So the motion is this, whereas the governing board has authority to establish one or more committees and grant and delegate to them such powers as it deems necessary in accordance with 30 VSA chapter 82 section 3071, whereas the executive committee consists of the chair, vice chair, committee chairs, clerk and others as ex officio non voting members meets twice monthly and as needed, whereas the executive committee requires the authority necessary to address and manage the dynamic myriad and varied business details of CV Fiber. It is hereby moved that the governing board approve the amended executive committee charter dated March 28, 2022 as amended. And the amendment being second. the deletion of policies. All right, then we have a, we have a second, second by Jeremy. Oh, sorry, Jer Jeremy got in there with a second. Is there is there any discussion on this before we take a vote, please? Alan, I think I see your hand. I would like to move to amend by striking the language of 1D and recommit this section to the executive committee for further clarity as to how the responsibilities stated within it can be better managed. And if I may say, I, I'm 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 doing this because I think it's the right thing to do, and I'm doing it out of respect for the for the full board. I I think as as somebody who sat on full boards, I I know what you're feeling and thinking about this, and I think we owe it to you to get this straight and not just pass it and say it's going to be fine. I think we can I I think we can do a better job writing this. 
I'll second that so we can move it forward. Um, I guess my question to Ray and everyone else would be, if we strike D, does that mean that those six things that we had on the executive committee can't get done? Are, are those specifically uh, B1, D items? Um, just one item. Just one item if we strike all of D. Right. Okay. Okay, it, so I, now now yeah, we have a if, uh, ahead, Jeff, before accepting that as a possible friendly amendment in the interest of moving this forward as well. Is there any more discussion on Alan's suggestion? I, I think Tom has his hand up on that. You're on mute, Tom. I'm sorry. Yep. Now my my hand is for other purposes. It was not a court. It was not related to Alan's. Well, I'm willing to accept uh, Alan's amendment as a as a friendly amendment if it's uh, seconded by who, Jerry? Uh, second. It was seconded by Jeremy. Jeremy and he said I, he seconded uh, that. Al, Alan yeah. Alan made it as as an official motion rather than okay. as a friendly amendment. So and, and I, I don't really, know if you want to make it a friendly amendment. I would accept that, Alan. I'm willing to accept it as a friendly amendment, so that that takes care of the issue. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. So then let's get to uh, to Tom and RD. Okay. You have your hand up, but you've had it up all this time. I don't know if it's residual. I, Go ahead, Tom. I I I note that the overse overseeing and managing direct day to day uh, operations is already covered by A three. So if if it's agreeable to Ray to withdraw this paragraph, I'm agreeable. <clears throat> Understood. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I was curious on B1J. Um, if there could be a little bit more explanation of, of what the intent is there. Um, it just seems like an, a spot that is. It's vague enough that it could be taken broadly, and so I just want to make sure that um, we all understand what we're what we're going for. I'm not saying I'm against it. I just would like to hear so some more that, that is it. word for word out of the statute, I believe. So that is one of the things that the statute gives to the CUDs to be able to do. It, it's 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 word for word. Um, right. So I meant, but why why would be moving it to the executive committee as opposed to the, the governing board? Yeah, I would I would say that it's, uh, it's because the committee is the committee of action. And so this isn't uh, the board isn't probably going to be actively doing a solicitation or accepting accepting grants. So, for example, let's just take the let's just take the Cabot grant that was just um, awarded, right? Or, or um, committed. We the the executive committee could accept that. It doesn't have to go to the board, for example. I'm, I'm the reason I'm airing it is uh, I recall maybe two years ago a significant amount of debate going on on the board about um, who is allowed to uh, accept grants and does that have to go to a board vote and I believe some policy created around that and I have no problem with this going to the executive committee. I just wanted to point that out that that is a fairly significant divergence from a large topic of discussion we had previously. Which is to be expected, as as Alan had yep. described, as 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 we go from, you know, a, a a grassroots organization that was trying to build something, to an organization that now has something built, if you will, and needs to move it forward. Those the it, the the responsibilities. Uh, change over time as the facts change and as the response as the requirements of decisions uh have changed but alan your hand is up sir please go ahead yeah uh tom one one of the things that happened because i didn't get the uh revised uh policy on grant submissions out to people in time for us to look at it tonight you you haven't seen how that policy has been changed the first sentence after the preamble to the new policy is that the executive committee shall approve the submitter, the submission of all grants 
and the execution of grant awards. And I don't know if 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 that would make things clear and if that's what you want to see, but I think people felt that there had to be a committee that at some point had to look at and approve the submitter and the submission of grants. And my understanding, I, there's there's nothing there's nothing here that says the governing board will approve all. Say the governing board chair shall be responsible for executing all grant awards. So again, maybe this is this is one of those issues. I think it's covered by by what this new policy is going to be, but I'm not sure it's what you would like it to be or what you think it should be. So maybe we've got to look at this again too. This is the hard stuff. I I I I totally respect what you're saying about who should give approval for what. And I totally respect the people who are trying to get all the work done that is starting to flow through like, you know, water over Niagara Falls kind of stuff. Um, it, it, it's it's really hard to figure this out. So we have we have a motion that has been seconded and there's a friendly amendment that's been accepted. So I'm going to ask for a vote. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a I'm going to do a roll call vote here. I'm going to go name by name. We'll go yay or nay, and and we will uh, we'll, we'll we'll just figure out where we where we where we stand on this so that we can move forward uh, because there's a lot more on this agenda, folks. Um, yeah. So, Alan, I'm going to start with you oh, because Jerry. your name happens to be at the top of the list. Jerry. Yes. Just just a note, Jerry. I do have a list of the voting delegates because there are some alternates who are here but we're voting because of people missing so if you wanted i could go through the list yes please in order okay uh so alan gilbert worcester yes david healy callis you're muted david david's muted Yes. Jeremy Matt Plainfield. Yes. Linda Gravel Waterbury. Yes. Ray Pelletier Northfield. Yes. Tom Fisher East Montpelier. Stain. John Morris Marshfield. Yes. Uh, Jerry Diamantides, Berlin. Yes. R.D. Eno, Cabot. Yes. David Went, Duxbury. Yes. Jonathan Williams, Berry City. Yes. Siobhan Paracone, Orange. Yes. Uh, Katerina Mack, Washington. Katerina had to leave. Oh, I did not see her leave. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, she left a little while ago. Okay. Uh, David Lawrence, uh, Middlesex. Yes. Uh, Sam Rosenberg, Moortown. Is Sam still in the meeting? Actually, I did not see Sam on the meeting. Okay, so I guess Sam is no longer with us either. Is there anyone who believes that they should be a voting member who I missed? Okay, um, my count is that that passes. Do you agree, Jerry? Oh, oh yes, it passes. Uh, certainly not unanimous, but quite well. Passes with one abstention, I believe. Yes. And. We, uh, speaking for the executive committee to the board, we serve at your convenience. Something isn't right, stomp on us immediately. 
Oh, well, Juan well, Jerry. Stop, stop yeah. on Jerry. Stop on Jerry. Stop on Jerry. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Stop that's on fine. Jerry. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And and I you you have no idea how much I appreciate and love the discussion and the input. I, I just want to say that personally. Um we really need to move on because my God, we have stuff to cover that is extremely important. I would like to move on to the construction sequencing. Um, David, do you do you want to do that presentation? Would you like me to do that? What, well, we what what's the, good for you, sir? I think we need to go into executive session. So if uh, Ray, do you I, have the text for doing that? No. I yeah, think sure. you're right. I'm sure before that I, we yeah. go and ex before we do that, I see David Lawrence has his hand up. Da yeah, David I just wanted to say really quickly that the uh, minutes should probably reflect that we are more civil than stomping on people. <laughs> I, I appreciate the sense of humor with which it was offered, and yet still, for posterity, we we are not a stomping body. I hope. So. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry, I'd like to note in advance that my expectation is that the next three items are actually in executive session. And yes, that, that's correct. That's why they're bunched together at the at the end, so that yeah, we can my we can do that. Would be the go in executive session um, for all three, come out of executive session, take such action as necessary, and um, so let me let me pull together that uh, let me pull together that motion. Yes, thank you. The motion will be a little in coate because I wasn't thinking that. John, John. In the meantime, I see that your 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 hand is up. Yes, uh, since I'm not uh, I'm not allowed in executive session, um, can I somehow be notified when you're coming back out so that I can catch up with whatever you might decide? Uh, yes, we can figure out a way to do that. Who has John's text? Um, John, if you email me, I can text you when we leave. Sure. And Jeremy Matt said that? Yes, that was Jeremy yes. Matt. Okay. And, uh, and Siobhan, I think we're okay with quorum because uh, Christopher Shank wasn't contributing to quorum. Anyways, uh, let's see, according to the, uh, where is it? We had originally 15 out of 21. So I think that we are good, but we shouldn't lose. Too we got to move fast. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we should move fast. Uh, good luck with that, though. Uh, yeah. Tom, you have a question, sir. I was just going to say, uh, unfortunately, Christopher left, but I was going to say um, we want to make sure we include all the alternates. And this is for the alternates benefit that I think we should include them in as much as we can of these uh, executive sessions so that they're able to step in and we can meet quorum on future meetings when somebody can't be there. I I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. RD, you have your hand up, sir. Uh, is it uh, can we uh, move to admit John to the executive session? I I I, I think that we can. Alan has his hand up. The person has to have information relevant to the discussion within the executive session to be able to be invited in. So you can't just say, oh yeah, that's fine if this person comes in. You have to have a reason why the person should be included. And the main reason has to do with does this person have information that we otherwise wouldn't have. Thank you. I withdraw my suggestion. Sorry, John. Yeah, yeah that, uh, we, that's why we haven't had John in the past frequently. Yeah. Well, we have. Uh, you have done so before. Um, you know. Um, I think at some point uh, in in the maturing of our organization, it might be useful to have the communicate the primary communications person, whether it's me or some professional down the road, to be an ex officio member. Let me let me ask you a question, John. Are you the are you the vice chair? Yes. Um, and and Chuck, isn't he, Chuck isn't here. Chuck isn't here. So. How late are you going to be up tonight? So uh, okay. Chuck is here, and, and so he's kind of acting in, in his stead, not a, not a delegate, not a voting member. Yeah, 
let, let's let let's 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 bring John into this one for that purpose. Did you hear? You didn't hear that, Alan. But no, I'm sorry. John John is on the John is the um, vice chair of the communications committee, and for that purpose, we are thinking of bringing him into the executive session. I would say he definitely has important information to uh, add to the discussion. <laughs> okay, thank you. So let's let's get that motion going. I I, I will so move. We Jeremy, admit John to the your, executive. Your hand session. is up. What what is it? what's up, Jeremy? Yeah, so I just wanted to so the the people that are others present that should be included in the min or included or excluded are uh, Janelle Smith, uh, Christian Meyer, Orca, Phil, John Walters. We've talked about him. There, uh, let's see. John Zimmerman is no longer here. And then there's also a Marshall Cottrell. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. I don't recognize that name, uh, but if that is someone who should be included, we should um, recognize them. Marshall, Marshall. Is a, he's a member of East Montpelier who uh, is interested in learning more about CP Fiber, but I don't think he would be part of the executive. OK, so we. We'll 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 do that without Marshall then. Okay, Ray, we're ready for your motion, sir. Please. Okay. Um, this is one of those things where there's two votes. One is a finding that um, the that the information, if it were public, would put CD fiber at a competitive disadvantage, and so we vote on that. And the second vote is that we actually go into executive session and we bring into executive session anybody else we want to include. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, cut, paste into the chat room here the um, the motion, which will need some ad living as we go, but uh, it's something like this: move that move that pursuant to one VSA section three thirteen alpha one alpha, we find that premature public knowledge of our discussions related to the CV fiber construction sequence and contract negotiations with CV fiber network designer and construction manager, and what was the other part? Oh, and the contract discussions with uh, our uh, ISP and network manager uh, would put CV Fiber at a competitive disadvantage. Move that we enter. Okay, that's so that's the first motion. Second. Well, is, there a reason, is there a we'll reason why Janelle Smith is not included? This is this isn't the motion that that's, that's the next know, step. People into it. She will motion. be included in the next step. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, uh, Alan, your hand is raised. Yeah. No, I just had. Let me read when we get to the next question exactly what the statutory language says about exclusion. I don't think we need it now, but I do have it open in front of me. Okay. Very good. So we have a motion in front of us. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None opposed, so the motion moves, so passed. So Please second, continue. The second motion is that we enter executive session to discuss the aforementioned um, negotiations um, pursuant to 1 VSA section 313 alpha 3 and that. Um, the vice chair of the communications committee, the executive director. Is there somebody else that we need to include? So let me read the language of who can who can be invited in. A board may choose to invite into the executive session any of the following legal counsel, staff, clerical assistants, and persons who are subjects of the discussion or whose information is needed. So what's the end of that, Alan? Okay. So, is there any amendments to that motion or a second to the motion I just made? You need to well, include Bill. We included the executive director and we included the vice chair of the communications committee. And the treasurer. I second. And Phil. And, and the treasurer. And I hear Linda seconding. Yes. yes. So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved, let's enter into executive session. Give me one moment, please, to stop the recording. Or we are no longer in executive session and we we have some motions to bring forward. Uh, 
Shall we do this one at a time, Ray, please? Yeah. Yes, we should. And, and the first one would be the sequencing. So if you have that motion off the, um, oh, wait a second here. I think, I think I got that motion. Okay, so I, I, I think I have that motion from earlier. Let me put it in the chat room. And and David and Harry, look at look at this look at this quickly so that uh, make sure that this is what uh, you recall. That looks good to me. Yep. David, you want to make the motion? Sure. Whereas the NRTC as part of the EPP has developed a high level design with this and design and construction distribution area sequence based on best engineering practices, whereas the Planning and Development Committee at its March 15th, 2022 meeting reviewed and recommended adoption of the sequencing plan to the Executive Committee. And whereas the Executive Committee at its 11, April 11th, 2022 special meeting reviewed and recommends the board approve the sequencing plan and has recommended I recommend approval of the disciplinary sequence. Well, okay, a little garbled there. Move that the governing board approve the distribution area sequence plan as reviewed and approved by the executive committee. Second. 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 You're muted, Jerry. Jerry, you're, Jerry, muted. you're muted. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm giving that second to Siobhan. Uh, R.D., your hand is up. Do you have a comment, sir? No. No. OK. All right. Very good. So let's let's move with a uh, uh, a vote here. Um, I'm going to go in the opposite direction this time. Is there are there are there anyone that that disagrees with this motion? I see no one disagreeing, therefore the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to our next motion for the NRTC contract. I just put the motion in the chat room. The motion is in the chat. Thank you, Ray. Uh, so um, I guess I'll read this. Whereas CD Fiber entered into a master services agreement with Pulse Broadband, a subsidiary, subsidiary of National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative Effective 21 December 2021, whereas MSA has multiple separate exhibits regarding specific services requiring agreement and execution by the parties, whereas the CV Fiber negotiating team has reached agreement with NRTC on the following services, initial project plan, project management services, field collection, electronic design services, network engineering services, construction outside plant services, Whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board approve the execution of the service agreements in RTC. It is moved that the governing board approve the execution of service agreements with NRTC exhibits C, D, E, F, and G, and that the executive committee be authorized to oversee the implementation of the services and approve payment of acceptable services. Second. Second. <laughs> All right, Siobhan, Siobhan's going for a hat trick here. OK, uh, let, let, let's let's do this vote in the same way. Are there are there any board members, delegates here um, opposed to this move motion? Seeing none opposed, it's unanimous. The motion passes. Thank you very much. We have one more motion for Waitsfield uh, Champlain Telecom, and I see that that Motion is now in the chat room. Who's reading this one? <clears throat> so I'll I'll read it. Uh, just bear with me. Whereas CV Fiber requested proposals on July 21, 2021, from a firm or jointly from a group of firms to be the operator, construction manager, internet service provider, and business manager of the fiber to the premises CV Fiber Community Network. Whereas CV Fiber selected a group of firms, a team led by the National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative. NRTC with which to negotiate agreements where CV Fiber executed the Mass Services Agreement with Pulse Broadband, subsidiary of the NRTC, effective 21 December, to be its network designer, construction manager, and perform other related services. Whereas CV Fiber negotiating team has reached substantial agreement with Waitsfield Champlain Valley Telecom, a member of the NRTC team, to serve as a CV Fiber community network 
internet service provider and network manager, whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board approve the contract award to Waitsfield Champlain Valley Telecom. It is hereby moved. That the governing board approve Waitsfield Champlain Valley Telecom as a CV fiber community network internet service provider and network manager, subject to the completion of successful negotiations as determined and approved by the executive committee, and that the executive committee be authorized to oversee the implementation of the services and approve the payment of the acceptable services. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> she did a it. Trick. A She's got a hat trick. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a vote on this motion. Do it the same way that we we just did for the other two. Is there anyone opposed? Any voting member opposed to this motion? Seeing none, uh, this motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. It has been a relatively long meeting. It has been an exhaustively long day. Uh, Janiel, I hope you enjoy drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have yes, it anyway. been a lot of that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for staying. Jerry, I would like to uh, ask uh, you and Janiel to stay on after the meeting. I have one more issue to discuss with the two of you. Okay, we can do that, and I will do that after I stop recording. All right. <laughs> Jeremy, Matt, your hand is up. Um, motion to skip um, round table. Everyone say <laughs> thank you and uh, to adjourn. Yes, second. Let's, uh, second. let's just have a motion to adjourn. Second, everybody is begging to please adjourn. So I'm going to stop recording Excellent. and I will stay on for Linda, but Linda, not for very long. <laughs> Bye. Five minutes. All right. Thanks, maybe, everyone. Maybe Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank Good night. You. Welcome, Janiel. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good night.